The U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School recently conducted tests of a newly conceived autonomous fighter capability that could fundamentally alter the battle space of the future. The project, dubbed HavRadar 2, is part of the Air Force's larger Loyal Wingman concept, which is designed to allow a single human pilot to command a host of unmanned aircraft in real time, while employing advanced computer software to automatically detect and avoid enemy threats. The Air Force Research Laboratory is, is very interested in uh, technologies that are going to be used in, in future warfare. So one of the particular technologies we're interested in is this thing called the Loyal Wingman. And uh, here on Havrader 2, we're investigating what you might see or what behavior you might see a Loyal Wingman perform if you were to have an unmanned airplane, fighter-sized airplane, accompany a manned aircraft in, into combat. The software, developed by Lockheed Martin and the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory, makes use of the unique capabilities of the F-16 Vista, a variable stability in-flight simulator test aircraft. The Vista aircraft is, it's an in-flight simulator, meaning it's housed in an F-16, but we can make the airplane fly in different ways. So we can make it fly like a heavy aircraft, uh, like the fighter it is, we can put in uh, different flight control uh, control laws, schemes so that it flies differently, or in the case for Hav Raider 2, we have it fly essentially by autopilot, by remote control, as directed by the, uh, the OmniView here. Vista is operated by two pilots, or three pilots in this case, two human pilots in Vista's cockpit, and a third computer pilot operating from the ground. Uh, it's called the Enterprise Open Systems Architecture Rack. It contains the logic uh, and the processes uh, that take in the information about the battle space, and we are connected to the aircraft via that, da that data link. What we could do during flight is that we could actually inject threats. We could say, hey, a, a surface-to-air missile battery popped up over here, and it just happens to be in your flight path. What are you going to do? And the the OSARAC and the mission services inside of it were able to recognize that that threat exists and to reroute or recalculate a route and send that information up to the aircraft so it would really plan to be around those threats. The test combines Vista's proven automated vehicle control systems with a new capability that may one day permit aircraft to plan and execute missions without human intervention. You know, in the past, to do this, you'd have to sit and draw out the route and it would be very complex and if there were different threats you'd have a human would have to be making all those decisions and that's far too much to be doing in the airplane if you're trying to fly and do all those things yourself this system is focused on the basics here's the target here's the weapon i want you to use here's the time i want you to be there go so that now frees me up in the manned aircraft to fight my fight and monitor what's happening but now i can deal with whatever other threats are out there. Results from this latest test series are forthcoming, but participants were markedly impressed by preliminary observations that the software performed as expected. The results from, from what we've been flying have been uh, very positive. I mean, we've been able to uh, generate routes, send to the aircraft, and have it fly uh, those routes, you know, pretty spot on. So it's a, it, it was a pleasant surprise to have it work so well. Havrader 2 was the latest milestone in expanding the Air Force's autonomous capabilities, which future test pilot school classes may continue refining in the future. I would love to see a third iteration of Havrader. Um, we've progressed, uh, kind of taken baby steps each time. Uh, we now have a ground station uh, here at TPS that can run open mission system software. Uh, we'd like to take the next step forward and get something integrated onto the airplane and uh, keep kind of developing this approach and and adding more and more mission services in. Uh, this is such a great environment for us. We certainly love to keep leveraging our relationship here with TPS and keep bringing out every time we're able to get a new cut of software, develop a new capability, just bring it right out here and, and go fly. Right now, we ask pilots to train for a scenario where they may put their life at risk in order to attack some target that we deem necessary. If a pilot can offload some of that risk onto an unmanned wingman, then we can make him more capable and, uh, and make him more likely to survive and fight another day.